Hey, what's up YouTube? Justin Van Frary here, and I am back with yet another episode of how to use this right here. This is the number one primitive trap trigger in the whole world. It's my quick release peg, it's so versatile, and if you stick around, I'm gonna show you how to make this. <laughs> We're going to work on making a conibear trap today using this quick release peg as the trigger mechanism. All right, this thing is so awesome, it's so versatile. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, then make sure you look at the link in the description below and you can see all sorts of different uses for this. If you have any other ideas or you'd like to see this in action in a specific scenario, make sure you leave a comment. Down, down below and I'll see if I can work it out for you and make it happen. All right, so let's get at it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two stakes that we carved the tips off of, and we're gonna stick them in the ground, and this is gonna act as the primary structure for our trap. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in here. This is gonna act as the clamp, okay? As you can see, I carved some teeth in here, all right? They don't have to be uh, crazy sharp or anything. That's just gonna provide a lot more tension so that uh, when the animal, whether it's a hand or a neck, um, it's just gonna cause the struggle to be more painful. So they're gonna wanna stay put in the trap. These are slightly different lengths. The top one's gonna be shorter than the bottom, all right, because we're gonna end up lashing to the outside of the bottom one, which is gonna draw it up when the trap is triggered, okay? So just to keep it from binding, keep this out of the way, I, I made sure one, the bottom one was gonna be longer than the top. So let's go ahead and start by lashing the shorter one to the top of the trap. doesn't matter what's up here okay so next we're gonna get this ready and we'll start by tying a modified clove hitch all right technically two is a clove hitch I'm gonna do a third one just for added security locks down on itself and it won't go anywhere. It's important that 
the knot is tied at the top of this ridge where I carved in all of these points, okay? That's gonna keep it in the upward position when it's pulled on, all right? You don't want it here like this, you know, on the back end, otherwise it's gonna twist and pull. So right here on the edge, I'm gonna bring the string and I'm just gonna go a little bit longer than the length of the wood. I'm gonna tie an overhand knot, okay? okay essentially, we're gonna tie another piece to the other end of this and we want this to, to end up being pretty level, or pretty, uh, pretty centered. So it forms a triangle, just like that. So I'm just gonna hold that there. Go ahead and add my modified clove hitch. Maybe there's a knot for that, or there's a name for that knot. I don't know it. It's just something I found is just slightly more secure than the actual standard clove hitch. Okay, so there we go. Again, we're making sure that that is tied up at the point right here. So we can trim off this excess here. All right, and essentially, Our trap is complete. This will hang actually on the back side of this, right? When it's triggered, it just clamps. See that? All right. Next, we've got our handy dandy counterweight. We're just going to wrap this up just like a Christmas present here. this back under here for some added security and back around one more time back to that simple quick release knot it's basically just a half of a bow so I can retrieve my bank line when I'm all done. All right, so now we have all the pieces to our trap. I'm just gonna pull this together. See, we want our weight to be far enough off the ground couple half hitches to keep this in place. All right, they always say two is good. Two is good, three is better, right? So essentially, it's gonna happen when the, the rock is gonna be suspended. When it's triggered, it's gonna drop, creating tension on here. Now, obviously, the bigger the rock, the more tension this is gonna produce. Okay? You just want to make sure that your stakes are in the ground. The bigger the trap, the bigger the animal, the bigger the counterweight, right? The, uh, the bigger your stakes have to be um, where you got to make sure that they're somehow really secure in the ground. So let's just test this out right here, see what happens. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's not going anywhere. All right, so now the part you've been waiting for, how in the world do we incorporate the quick release peg? as a trigger mechanism in this. Well, I'm gonna show you. Nice thing about this right here is you get to save on cordage. I'm just tying a couple half hitches. I'm gonna go for my standard three, even though two is probably sufficient. Three half hitches, okay? And then we're just gonna do a couple clove hitches well, to tie this on here, doesn't have to be anything purdy. Just 
going to do three. That'll keep it from slipping. Okay. There we go. That's all we need for that. Cut off the excess. Okay. Need to tie this on somehow to your deadfall weight. Doing a couple half hitch knots. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want this. We want to measure. It's okay if this line is loose because this trap triggers so quickly and an extra weight will pinch the animal in there in this particular trap. So right here is where I want to tie simple overhand knot. Again, does not have to be anything crazy. Cut off the excess. All right, and for the magic piece that makes this whole thing work together, all you need is an overhand knot that's simply large enough to go around the diameter of your peg. So let's test this out. Perfect. That fits on there just perfect. So then, the loop that is attached to your deadfall, okay, you're going to slide that through the loop that is currently loose, okay. This is what's going to end up being used to actually trigger the trap itself. We're going to pull this up here, all right, that loop that's going to support the weight of the deadfall, and then we're going to take, all right, this is the line that's going to eventually trigger the trap. So we're just going to put that on there. There we go. So essentially, when this line is pulled now, watch what happens. And the trap is been sprung. So there we go. All right, so there you have it. That's how you do a kind of bear trap with a quick release peg. Super simple, super easy. You can scale it to any size creature you're trying to trap. It's starting to rain, so I'm gonna head inside. But until next time, enjoy the woods. Here's a link to a video where I demonstrate the quick release peg in a snare trap scenario. And here's another link of where I use it in a deadfall situation. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll be back with you for more videos as soon as I can.